you have a reef tank and have been successful with soft and large polyp stony corals. You've come to the point where you're ready to take the next step. The more you see them, the more you're inspired by Acropora-dominated tanks. But as you learn about each system, you realize they're all doing things differently. Why is that? You're surprised when you stumble upon stunning tanks from the 2000s, and not only are they just as breathtaking as modern tanks, but many use different methods and employ different equipment than what is popular today. You realize that, while keeping corals as a science, hobbies by nature are subject to trends. And this is amplified by the internet. People successfully used the Berlin method in the 90s, DSBs in the early 2000s, bacteria-driven systems like Zeovit and Biopellets in the late 2000s and early 2010s. The Triton method was all the hype a couple of years ago, you recall. Nowadays, it's barely mentioned. Things seem to fade out quick. But as one fades, another is ready to take its spot. Some of today's buzzwords are biodiversity, bacteria dosing, and chase pH. What's going to be the next hot topic? The more research you do, the more frustrated you become. You feel like a rope being pulled in different directions, and you have this sinking feeling that it's only the experienced hobbyists who can distinguish helpful information from all the noise. The inexperienced are the ones, unfortunately, who get lost in the information abyss. abyss. But the urge to progress keeps coming. The vision of your dream tank re-emerges every day, twice per day, like the ocean tides. Reds, purples, greens, pinks, yellows, blues. Colors all neatly organized into tables, clusters, and staghorns. And how all those shapes coalesce to form a stick forest silhouette. You're obsessed. And so, you take action. You start dosing additives to lower your nutrients. You buy a calcium reactor and get it running right away. You buy an expensive device that tests parameters for you you automate as much as you can. Stability is what's important, is how you justify these purchases. You hold off on adding more lights. Instead, you resort to turning up the intensity on your existing modules. It looks like enough, you conclude. You don't add more flow because pumps are unsightly. This'll do, you tell yourself. Before you know it, you spent over $1,000 for five high-end Acropora frags that you've won during a high-pressure sales event. Though they arrive in good shape, it doesn't take long for them to go downhill. Your heart sinks every time you look at them. And so you act. You try this supplement and that coral food, you test this and test that. One thing seems to work immediately and so you buy more frags. But once again, things go downhill. Feeling like you're being kicked when you're already down, cyanobacteria patches appear in the tank. Your cabinet progressively fills with broken promises. Why don't they work? You say in frustration. You start to resent everyone posting their beautiful corals on social media. You delete your Instagram account. All the time researching, all the money spent has gotten you nowhere. You just need to stop thinking about it. And so, you take a break. The next Sunday rolls around and you're hanging out in your living room. The time away from the tank has allowed you to decompress. The TV's on in the background as you scroll through your YouTube recommendations. Who's watching this? You say walking over to your tank. The tank is unsightly because there's more algae on the glass than you ever allowed. The skimmer is not dialed in, the filter sock is clogged and overflowing, and after a quick glance, you conclude the corals don't look any worse than they did two weeks ago. Still brown. The thing is, you didn't look long enough to notice a few polyps peeking out on one of the pieces. You take 30 minutes to clean the front glass, change the filter sock, wipe the skimmer neck, and check basic parameters. You walk away. You're not going to waste this beautiful Sunday at home. For the next several weeks, you keep up with basic maintenance and don't get too preoccupied with the tank looking pristine. Your wife doesn't like how you've let the tank go, but she'll happily trade that for the better mood you've been in. You never give the corals more than a glance because for all you care, they don't resemble those pictures online. More time passes and the corals improve, but you don't notice because it's happening so gradually. Before you know it, five months have passed since you added those frags and half of them died long ago. Today, white spots on one of the corals grabs your attention. You feel your blood start to boil. Here we go again, you mumble. As you move closer, you notice the tips are bone white, but the axial coralites have a square shape. And there are polyps inside. Closer inspection reveals that the tips aren't pure white. You vaguely see pigments. Could this actually be growth? You take a step back and notice other corals with their polyps gently swaying in the current. And what coral survived appear to be gaining some color back. 
The tank also looks more mature. Coraline algae blankets the rocks and equipment and that cyanobacteria problem seems to have gone away on its own. I really didn't do anything, you think to yourself. The thing is, you actually did. You stopped tinkering and as a result, the tank reached a level of stability. And because of this, for the first time in five months, you're optimistic, albeit cautiously. And then it hits you. You've been approaching this the wrong way the whole time. You now realize that we cannot force nature's hand. She's in charge and we are merely assistants. We help her stay within a healthy path and only intervene when necessary. She will reward your diligence with growth and color. The stipulation is, however, she gets to say when. So you steady the course, changing water periodically, testing parameters and not letting things get out of hand. Your scars from the past make you hesitant at first, but eventually, you muster the courage to buy more pieces. They are in borderline health when you get them, but it doesn't take long for them to perk up in your system. Existing corals in the tank continue to grow and display colors you've never seen before. For the first time, you are certain you're on the right track. You hop on message boards only to address specific questions. And, out of curiosity, you listen to reefers on Instagram and YouTube, but you don't let them weaken your contentment. Your perspective has shifted from when you first started. You don't take everything at face value, because like the human supplement market, some additive companies thrive on claims that are difficult to prove. You realize that the reefing hobby is as trendy as the fashion industry. Keeping up with the latest trends might make you more popular, but it's far from necessary. This is not to say that you don't try new products. The difference is now you implement one thing at a time and go very slowly because you don't want to disrupt your momentum. You add another light and it immediately shows areas of shadowing you never realized. Polyp extension and colors have improved since adding that additional pump. You wish you had done these things earlier. Two years have now passed and the tank is a success. You once thought that these gurus who say to keep it simple were lying, that they're hiding a secret. But you now know simplicity is a legitimate method just like the countless others. And it's often much cheaper. You used to think that all those pictures were fake, but now you see some truth in them. You care less that a frag isn't perfect when you receive it. As long as it's healthy, you are confident that you can color it up. It seems like yesterday, you were frustrated and ready to quit. Gazing at your thriving reef tank, you're glad you stuck with it. And though you've made mistakes along the way, you now know it was inevitable. Because in reefing, some lessons need to be experienced before they can be understood. The book on Acropora Care was written decades ago. It's the impatient reefer's pursuit for better color and faster growth that often ends in self-defeat. It's a lesson you won't forget on your next tank upgrade.